Okay, students. We in last lecture we discussed the intestinal obstruction, its classification, the causes of intestinal obstruction, pathophysiology, what is a strangulation, how it occurs, a special type of uh, mechanical intestinal obstruction. obstruction and bands chronic inflammation adhesion classification and we discuss the acute intersusception this is condition in which the gut is invaginated into the adjacent segment almost invariably the distal proximal into the distal Commonly occur in children between five to ten months. This causes we discussed earlier. Its pathology. I told you in my previous lecture. And. Intersusception may be anatomically defined according to the site and extent of invagination. It was discussed, most common is uh, iliocolic intersusception, and the second most is ilio, iliocolic. These patients present with uh, repeated bouts of uh, abdominal pain and distensions and uh, the CT scan, ultrasound are the modalities to diagnose clinical, uh, clinically patient is uh, usually examined between the bouts of pain and there will be the uh, palpable mass in the periamlical region, a sausage-shaped mass of which uh, concavity uh, face towards the umbilicus. And there will be uh, the empty right iliac fossa on palpation of abdomen. It is known as sign of dance. And uh, on CT scan, there will be the target sign. Target sign, it is pathognomonic of uh, intersusception. It's a uh, appearance of donor shaped mass in, on the CT scan. Another condition which causes intestinal obstruction is valvulus. A valvulus is a <clears throat> twisting or axial rotation of a portion of bowel about its mesentery. A rotation causes obstruction to the lumen. 180 degree torsion if it is tight enough and causes vascular occlusion in mesentery. If the rotation is 360 degree, it is more vulnerable and causes vascular occlusion and ischemia of the gut. Volvulus is classified as primary because it is caused by the congenital malformation of the gut and secondary it is due, due to rotation of a segment of bowel around an acquired adhesion or stoma. Volvulus may be of a sigmoid colon Sequel valvulus, and sometimes very rarely the valvulus may occur in the stomach, the gastric valvulus. Sigmoid valvulus is most common cause of uh, large bowel obstruction in indigenous black African population. Rotation nearly always occur in anti-clockwise direction in this valvulus. Predisposing factors of Volvulus is narrow attachment of uh, pelvic mesentery, long pelvic mesentery, overloaded pelvic colon, and bands of adhesion, peridiverticulitis. 
these are the predisposing factor causing the causing the valvulus clinical feature as a whole as a uh, whole the intestinal obstruction present with pain distension vomiting and absolute constipation acute intestinal obstruction present usually with pain distension vomiting and absolute constipation these are the pathognomonic or classical signs of and symptoms of uh, acute intestinal obstruction the intestinal obstruction may be a small bowel obstruction in which a small bowel high small bowel and low small bowel obstruction and the large bowel obstruction in a small bowel obstruction high if it is higher small bowel obstruction the patient usually presents early vomiting and distension may not be observed in this patient or minimal distension abdominal distension may occur low small bowel obstruction mean in the terminal ileum or somewhere in lower side patient presents with abdominal central abdominal distension along with vomiting distension is a bit earlier and vomiting is also present in these patient large bowel obstruction patient they usually present with intestinal uh, or, or abdominal distension and abdominal pain distension and vomiting is the late feature in this large bowel obstruction along with absolute constipation the constipation is um, uh, absolute constipation term you are observing here you may know what are the types of uh, constipation in surgical side we uh, divide a constipation in absolute or the relative constipation absolute constipation is the constipation in which patient is is uh, uh, unable to pass feces and flatus both are not passed and in relative constipation patient is uh, able to pass the flatus patient gives the history of uh, passing flatus but there is no uh, feces passed patient cannot open the bowel late manifestations of intestinal obstruction are the dehydration as we discussed in the pathophysiology patient uh, have dehydration due to shift of the fluid in the interstitial space in the gut patient may have oliguria due to dehydration hypovolemia shock pyrexia septicemia respiratory embarrassment and peritonitis these are the late features we investigate these patient with the detailed history clinical examination on history we can uh, have some uh, impression of patient is uh, having either a small bowel obstruction or the large bowel obstruction or if it is a small bowel obstruction on clinical features we can also have some impression if uh, it is higher obstruction or lower small bowel obstruction then we proceed for the investigation we in, uh, divide the investigation into parts the general assessment of the patient's uh, patient with the investigation 
Well, that is we what we do is routine investigation is a blood uh, complete picture or see complete blood count cbc along with uh, sh random sugar serum creatinine urea and electrolyte hepatitis b c screening liver function tests this these are the routine tests and this um, in these investigation we may found some clue of uh, some sepsis or dehydration or the raised creatinine or the or the electrolyte imbalance for the diagnostic investigation we proceed for the with the ultrasound abdomen which is very much uh, uh, easily available, cheap, and uh, there is no uh, radiation exposure. It, in this ultrasound, we may found the peristaltic movements if they are exaggerated or diminished or or absent peristalsis on ultrasound dilated gut loops. We can found and. For the confirmation of our diagnosis, we uh, send the patient for X-ray, abdomen, erect, and supine posture. If uh, diagnosis is uh, not clear, we can or or some diagnosis uh, which we want to confirm that um, a special type of uh, uh, of. Uh, of uh, investigation are required for diagnosing the the uh, different conditions like uh, wellness or the intersusception these are diagnosed on ct scan or some growth causing the intestinal obstruction they can be diagnosed on CT scan of abdomen and pelvis. I will give you time, time to uh, 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 ask the question in the end. Okay. Okay. In, on uh, uh, ultrasound, <coughs> sorry, an X-ray abdomen, erect posture, and the supine. In erect posture, we found this type of picture. There are gas fluid levels. These are the gas fluid level, air fluid levels, multiple air fluid levels. In X-ray, normal X-ray, two air fluid level in adult patients is not significant. These are normal. At the duodenal cap and the terminal ileum, we can found the air fluid levels normally. So, if there are two air fluid levels, We consider it normal. If it is more than two or multiple air fluid, we consider it abnormal and patient is having obstruction. Different in um, supine posture, the gut become prominent and we can assess which, uh, which part of the gut is actually involved in obstruction. If there is obstruction at the level of jejunum, there are valvular conniventus in the jejunum and these form a ring shape appearance or ladder appearance. If this, these are continuous and equal intervals. 
these valve like condiments are are visible on x ray supine so there is it is diagnostic of jejunal dilatation the ileum is featureless there is no fe uh, special feature of the ileum it's a characterless dilatation mean its ileal loops are dilated and in the colon there are hostration and there are formation of incomplete rings due to these hostrations this shows the dilatation of the colon except the cecum the cecum give the appearance of uh, inverted glass shape okay and if the obstruction is due to due to valvulus there will be a omega sign may be observed the gut is dilated at the upper abdomen and this uh, this type of dilatation is observed in the sigmoid valvulus this is ct scan of uh, of intersusception this is target sign the donor shape appearance of that uh, intersusception is the target sign this ct scan has replaced the contrast barium or uh, other studies but if it is done contrast study barium study there will be a claw sign if ileocolic intersusception this is the claw sign it can be observed in intersusception these are special features of different special type of intestinal obstruction so as a general how we treat the acute intestinal obstruction we make the patient an npo pass the ng tube to decompress the gut pass foley's catheter for um, assessment of uh, output and uh, hydration status split and electrolyte replacement we start we pass large bowl cannula and start the fluid and replace the electrolyte start the broad spectrum antibiotics give analgesics ppis proton pumps pump inhibitors and the relief of obstruction by surgery if we what we do in uh, surgery we uh, plan for the for the exploratory laparotomy and if we have a, a definite diagnosis of obstruction in our hand we have a previous plan what to do in the uh, uh, during the laparotomy we what we open the uh, laparotomy with the midline there are different ways to open the abdomen for laparotomy it's a midline incision it's a, it can be a paramedian incision and in uh, in a pediatric patient we uh, perform laparotomy with the transverse incision so we explore and explore the cause of obstruction and deal it accordingly if it is due to the bend we just release the bend bury the end part of the uh, bend in the serosa and place the drain and uh, close the abdomen if gut is very much uh, distended we uh, do the decompression we we uh, 
pull, uh, we push the fluid and gases towards the rectum and to pass them from the from the anal canal. Or sometimes entrotomy is also required to decompress the gut. What we see in during laparotomy, we see the cause of obstruction. One is the adhesion band or the hernias. Hernia surgery is uh, due to her, uh, hernial obstruction surgery is performed at the level of hernia. Like uh, if uh, it's the inguinal hernia is the cause of obstruction, we explore, we do the perform the surgery from the inguinal incision. We explore the gut, check the viability of the gut. If it is viable, we reduce the gut and other content, we repair the hernia. If gut is non-viable, the signs of non-viability of the gut are its uh, luster is uh, uh, decreased and it's, it becomes flabby, black colored, and uh, the, uh, when we prick the mesentery border of the of that gut, it does not bleed. Okay, <clears throat> then it is uh, excised, mean it is resected and anastomosed, and uh, hernia is repaired. And if it is, uh, it's, uh, the gut is. Uh, not viable during the laparotomy, abdomen uh, through the midline or somewhere. So what we do, we just assess the gut viability. If it is it is uh, non-viable, we resect an anastomose, and sometimes we give the stoma, covering stoma, or we bring the uh, the viable part. We excise the uh, non-viable part and we bring the viable part through the abdominal wall as a stoma. If the cause of uh, intestinal obstruction is, uh, is uh, intersusception, the diagnosis is made preoperatively and uh, the, uh, these intersusceptions, they are they can be managed non-operatively or the operative by the operative procedures. Non-operative uh, management includes the medical treatment managed like uh, as an intestinal obstruction in the same way. What the slide is showing, and the barium or the hydrostatic or pneumatic reduction of the of the intersusception non operative procedure is not performed if there are signs of peritonitis or peritonism non operative procedure is not indicated in this situation we do the laparotomy we reduce the intersusception if peritonitis is due to proximal perforation then we deal accordingly if volvulus is our diagnosis before surgery this volvulus can also be treated non-operatively by the flattest tube or sigmoidoscope, uh, through the sigmoidoscope, we pass the flattest tube and decompress the sigmoid colon. And patient, if uh, in uh, uh, old age, frail patient, this is enough to perform. And definite procedure is done in younger patient afterwards. But if we perform the surgery, in a patient with volvulus, we explore, we found the twisting of the gut and uh, uh, found the volvulus, we have certain options to treat. We can resect the, the part of uh, twisted part 
and anastomose it or we can bring the we can uh, remove the twisted and dilated part of the uh, gut and we bring both hands of of uh, gut through the surface it's known as palmicolix technique as a, we form the stoma of both side of the gut I mean these two double barrel stoma we form it is known as palmicolix technique another option is uh, we just uh, remove the obstructing lesion I mean uh, dilated part of the gut we close the distal end of the of the gut sigmoid colon and bring the proximal part as a stoma this is known as hardman procedure and when patient is okay with the after certain uh, period we uh, we uh, do the uh, continue uh, we do the restore the continuity of this gut thank you if you want to ask any question please send your message excuse me question you know you must unmute can to join जी अब कोई क्वेश्चन पूछना है आपने तो आप पूछ सकते हैं फाइंडिंग थोड़ा बता दे जी बेटा एक्सरे फाइंडिंग आपने बताई थी ना इसकी जी वो थोड़ा रिपीट जी वो बता दे ये देखिए ये इरेक्ट सॉरी सुपाइन एक्सरे ऑफ एबडोम एंड इसमें जो है लार्ज गेट आपको नजर आ रही है ठीक है देयर इज फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सम इनकम्प्लीट रिंग्स दिस इज ड्यू टू हॉस्ट्रेशन इसके ये हॉस्ट्रेशन की वजह से आपको ये इनकम्प्लीट रिंग्स आपको नजर आएंगे एंड जेजूनम जो है इसके अंदर ये कंप्लीट रिंग लेडर लाइक अपियरेंस होती है दीज आर द वेल्व लाइक एन इवेंट्स तो अगर आपको एक्सरे में सुपाइन एक्सरे में ये फाइंडिंग नजर आए तो मीन देयर दिस इज जेजूनम व्हिच इज डायलेटेड ठीक है बेटा और अगर इस तरह का फीचर नजर आए ये हॉस्ट्रेशन की वजह से एंड दिस इज नॉट एट एट रेगुलर इंटरवेल ये एक थोड़ा बड़ा है फिर छोटा है फिर इसमें स्पेस कम है तो ये जो है ना ये दीज आर द फीचर्स पैथोगनोमोनिक ऑफ द कोलन ठीक है और ये जेजूनम का है और इफ इट इज कैरेक्टरलेस ये देखें इसमें कोई कैरेक्टर नहीं है ये सीधा सीधा सा आपको नजर आ रहा है ना तो इफ इट इज फीचरलेस कैरेक्टरलेस कहना तो अच्छा बात नहीं चलो लेकिन फीचर लेस है ना इसका कोई फीचर नहीं है तो दिस इज आइलियम ठीक है और ये जब गैस जो है आपको एक्सरे में हमेशा ब्लैक जेड ब्लैक नजर आएगी ठीक है और दीज लाइन आर फॉर्म ड्यू टू द फ्लूड्स ये फ्लूड्स हैं ये ऊपर गैस है ब्लैक कलर की तो दीज आर एयर फ्लूड और गैस फ्लूड शेडोज ठीक है क्लियर यस सर थैंक यू और ये जैसे सिग्माइड वॉल्स हैं तो इसमें डायलेटेड गट जो है ना वो टूवर्ड्स द अपेक्स ऑफ द टूवर्ड्स द अपर पार्ट ऑफ द एबडोम ये फेस करता है एंड इट इज नोन एज ओमेगा साइन ये ओमेगा साइन है ठीक है 
अगर आप सी स्कैन में मैंने आपको ये टारगेट साइन बताया था ठीक है ये एलियो कॉलेक या या इंटरसेप्शन का साइन होता है और कंट्रास्ट अगर हम करवाते हैं बेरियम तो ये ये क्लो क्लो लाइक एक अपियरेंस आ रही है ठीक है तो इट इज नॉन एज क्लो साइन और कोई क्वेश्चन नो सर थैंक यू ओके पर्टिकुलर फीचर्स होते हैं उसकी वजह से फिर हम डायग्नोज करते हैं कि कौन से पार्ट जो है वो वहां पर ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है ये एंड मीटिंग करनी है